if we do this. Here is the first look of the AI turret. This is a 4K camera, which is eight megapixels, and it has a wide 109.9 .9 degree field of view. Hey everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. This is one of the latest products to hit Ubiquiti's camera lineup. This is the AI turret, and we're gonna take a look at some of the features and what you can and can't do with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes inside the box. So opening it up right here, you can see the turret is housed inside, which comes with a nice plastic casing. The main sensors and everything on the front is all covered to keep you that, give you that protection. And then we have a connectivity for this device right here. We have a bracket which sits at the back, which we'll have a look at how to get this installed shortly when we take this outside. We have another bit which we've seen in some of the access points where if you want to put this onto a suspended ceiling, you can do. And we also have a drill template. Inside we have all the screws and fixtures and everything you need fitted. And you have an Allen key and an ejection tool. We also have the screws again, similar to what you see in the access points, where if you want to set this up through a suspended ceiling. And finally, we have three different sleeves for this, depending on the thickness of your cable. Before we go ahead and get this plugged in, let's take a closer look at the unit itself. So we can see right here, this is quite a heavy unit. It's not as light as the turret, and we'll bring the turret over in just a second to compare against. It's made of full aluminum alloy, and there doesn't seem to be any plastic bits on here at all. We have a rubber sealing round here for the weathering, and just at the top right here is where you see the SD card input. So let's go ahead and open this, and we'll pop an SD card inside here. So let's start by taking Taking off the cover on the front end is a torque screw end so you can go ahead and take that off and you can see that's connected via a little rubber band just here or rubber piece of string and we can pop in the micro SD card just there so if I go to my SD cards I have a 128 gig right here so it does say you need to pop in at least 64 gigabytes so we have 128 just here so let's pop that in there you go that's now in and then we can go ahead and tie this back up so now let's go and get an ethernet cable and get this plugged in and just before we go any further we're going to go ahead and get these peeled off and this one as well so this one houses the lens so that looks nice and crisp out the box brand new so let's take a closer look at the camera itself so we have the status light around the side i'm assuming that's going to turn blue once we get it adopted led light at the front here which is going to be for the color night vision and then we have some ir sensors that are going to be built in and we have the microphone and speaker for the two-way audio all of this we're going to put to the test so we'll see how it sounds what you can hear on the other side so let's go over to the computer and get this adopted and you can see on the screen right here it says the ai turret is ready to be adopted so we can go ahead and click on that and let's see how easy and simple this is to adopt you can see there's two devices found but the other one i haven't adopted yet but this is the one that we're going to be adopting so the ai turret we go ahead and press add and there we go, you can see that status light on there has actually turned blue now, so we know that's adopted. And we can see this camera right here, so if I point this towards me, we can see that camera right there. So now we're going to take a look at some of the other settings on the computer. Let's go and have a quick look. You can see the AI turret behind me and everything is as crystal clear as you can see. This image is really nice, it's clear, it's vibrant, but this is during the daytime. Let's take a quick look at some of the settings of the camera itself. So. We go across to this side, we can see the AI turret. We can see it has the model number, the IP address, the frame rate, the bit rate, and then below we have the edge recording. Now down here, it says unknown health status. The SD card doesn't report it, so unfortunately it's not there. So there are some recommended ones by the looks of it, but we'll have a look at that in a second. I'm using six gig at the moment and it's gonna give me five days worth of storage with continuous recording and high quality. There are a few different options that you can choose in here and you can go ahead and choose continuous recording or event only, high quality or low quality, it's entirely up to you. But we'll bring the SD card back to the computer later and see what the file formats look like and how they are put together. We then have the recording settings where you have pretty much the standard sort of settings that you see across all the cameras. You can see a few additional things on here for the AI detection. So we have things like license page, person, vehicle, and then there's a few more audio detections as well. So you can see baby crying, barking, car alarm, car horn, and glass breakage. Along here you have, again, the recording quality, the overlay information. I think this is pretty much the same throughout most cameras, so I'm not gonna go over them. You have the edit zones that you have, again, in, in all the cameras, and the smart detections, line crossing, and privacy zones. 
but there is one feature that's been added and that's the loitering which you can now tick on here so this is actually unticked by default you'd need to tick it and then what you want it to do is it a person for more than 10 seconds or is it a vehicle for more than 10 seconds five minutes so you can make your choice you can choose to turn the spotlight on when it's dark finally we have the settings in here so we have the microphone set at 100 so we have done an audio test you can choose noise reduction if you wish to do so which will remove ambient noise around whether that's in a windy location or there's other sort of ambient noises in the area we have the night vision settings status sound and status light so that's the blue light that's on there you can choose to turn that on and off if you want the tags, so you can create a tag on this. So this is an outdoor camera, so I'm gonna get it added to that tag. And then we have the color night vision. So we'll test both color night vision and non-color night vision to see how well e each of these perform a little bit later in this video. And then we have some of the other standard features. Again, share live stream, notification settings where you can create any alarms that you want. Any advanced, so if you want to do RTSPS, you can do, so you can stream this somewhere else. And then we have the manage functionalities of removing it or even restarting the camera. So the settings within the camera itself seem fairly standard. There isn't anything out of the ordinary that we wouldn't expect already. So getting this installed is really easy. You pop your bracket in and we're gonna feed this cable through here and then we're gonna lock it just like so. So I'll pull that up and then we lock the cable in once it's all the way in and there you go. So now, if we do this, this is not gonna go anywhere. So we can go ahead and comfortably install this bracket now and you can feed this. There is movement in here so you can feed it through after. So let's get this part installed. That is now bracket fixed in place and now we can feed the cable back through and get it screwed in. Once your camera is up, you can go ahead and secure your cable. So we have the weatherproofing on here and we have this popped in and you can do this with a cable that's already been crimped as this has already been crimped. And then we can go ahead and plug it in and get it all tightened up. Just do make sure there's spots on here that they match up with what's on there. You can see the two gray dots match up, so that's all installed. And we've left this a little bit loose just to make sure we can adjust this. You can see the blue light that's just appeared on here. So we're ready to get this set up in the right position. So I'll check it with my phone, make sure it's done, and then we'll run some day and night tests. I'm now at standing at the edge of my driveway, and if I show you just turning that around, you can see the camera just up there and I'm approximately about 20 meters to the end of the drive. So I have my license plate that we've used in some other previous videos, and hopefully you can see this now popping up on the camera as I walk down into the drive. So looking at this, hopefully you should be seeing a slightly clearer image now. You should be seeing a clearer image coming through, and as I get closer and closer, it will be getting more and more clear. So this is what it looks like with a person. You can see what the clarity is like of the image, of looking at the person. This is exiting the driveway at this point and you can see the car that's being picked up on the video and we'll do another video of me coming back in to see what the image looks like. You should now see me appearing on the drive itself as I reverse and hopefully this is where it picks up the license plate and the car Now we're gonna move into the night tests and we're gonna start with the IR test first. So this is me walking towards the drive, which was from the back. And you can see as I get clearer, the license plate does come into focus, but I've, some of the angles may show it a little bit more out of focus. Now we're gonna do a car going off the drive and you can see the license plate is still very readable from what it's doing. So I'm reversing out and you'll see me reversing back in just so you can see both sides. and. Probably again, we get to about maybe 10 meters away and that license plate becomes readable. So really good for the image in terms of the night IR vision. Next, we move on to the color night vision mode. So this is where we expect to see the spotlight turn on. And again, starting about 20 odd meters away and walking a little bit more forward. And the light picks me up when I'm about six meters away. Now you do again read the license plate, there is a bit of a reflection on it again with probably the lighting on it, but you can still make out what that says. We then have a car driving into the driveway, again lights in so you can see the license plate again around a similar sort of place to IR where you can pick up the license plate. This is a bonus test where I actually have some driveway lights on here as well so we can see how much clearer the image gets with the additional lighting. I wanted to show this with no light at all. 
And in just a moment, you'll see the PIR light turn on and you'll see the image actually gets that little bit more clearer. So having the additional lighting obviously does help. This is an audio test of the AI Unify camera. This is me talking directly to you from about a meter away. And this is what the audio sounds like. This is an audio test of the AI bullet camera standing about three meters away. And this is what it sounds like. This is the AI bullet audio test. This is a test of the two way audio speak. Let's take a look at the detections and the recognitions. But the first thing I want to show you, I want to show you something in the smart zone detection. Now, there is something on here that you can say the loitering and the animal detection. And what I did earlier, and I'm highlighting this to you so you guys don't make the same mistake, is I ticked loitering. And then I went back to all my detections and stuff. I've done my recordings and I couldn't see anything there. So one thing to note is when you do tick loitering, all the other detections stop. So if you want to keep those there, do make sure you keep them highlighted and select the right ones. And if you want to go ahead and add that zone for loitering, you can click add new zone and that sets up something completely new. So you can make it just as wide as the other one and we can cover the whole screen and then you can tick loitering and then you can save that. Now you've got both options there with the default, which has all of these. And then we have the new zone, which also has the loitering option. Ubiquity are looking to actively fix the UX of the loitering. So hopefully there'll be an update coming soon to stop anybody else making the same mistakes. So I've pulled up the detections and I've got the AI turret and we've got all the events and the smart detections and it's showing me where the highlighted zones are within the last 24 hours, which is not surprising because this is where I've been walking up and down. And if we scroll down, we can see some of the detections down here. So we can see a vehicle and a loitering badge. We can see a vehicle. We can see a face, which is me. Uh, so not a very good face of mine, but it has picked it up nonetheless. And then you can filter each of these person. And then if there's been face detected, and that is uh, a lot of images of me, not very good ones, but they are there. Uh, we have the vehicles and some of them have picked up the registration or the license plate details. If you wanted the loitering, you could also change the targeting to person, color, uh, SUV, van, sedan, license plate detected. So you have all of these options and you can also turn these off, right? So you have the options for motion only as well. So you can just pick up, just turn off the smart detections and it will start picking up all the other motions as well. If we go to recognition, so this is where you set up your faces. So it's only found myself so far. So it's got all of these in here, as I mentioned, not very good shots, but we'll leave them in here for the time being. And you can do some settings on here. Make sure you have your name on it. You can add some notes on it. You can make it a person of interest and you can create some custom alarms, which I have to trigger when this person is seen. So we can go ahead and save that. And then we also go back to the license plate. And there would be a lot more on here when I was doing my testing earlier, but I had turned the loitering detection on, hence why there's not as many on here. And just like a person, you can type in the car. So we can just type in black car, for example, and we can add in a note if we need to, and if it's a vehicle of interest. So we can go ahead and save those. We can create some alarms or you can remove it if you don't need it at all. And I just wanna show you, I've left this recording a little bit longer and I wanna show you that you can see all the events on here. There's cars, there's persons, there's vehicles, so it does pick them up. And if I go to the recognition now and if I go to license plates, you can see it's picked up more of those license plates in the dark. So it does work in both day and night. So this is the SD card that you can see right here, the untitled one, and it says Unify Protect in here. Uh, there's this folder here, which doesn't seem to, which has some stuff in it. I think this is just what I recorded last night. Yeah, these are just some footages from earlier. But if we go into 11.24 and then the date, you can see there's a load of footage in here. And the footage seems to be recording in five minute intervals. There is one last thing that I'm gonna show you and that's on the playback. So you can see there's detection highlights and this happens in real time. So you can see it's found me as a person and it's showing the confidence level. And if I show you all the different options you have here so you have face person vehicle type color plate animal and the confidence level so i've chosen this clip specifically because you see me walking through and actually there's a car pulling into the driveway at the same time so if we just forward this a little bit and you can see already it's picked up that it's an suv and that's got to be well over 20 meters away at this point and we get to about 12 to 14 meters away and it's already picked up the number plate so and it's around 80 to 90% in terms of confidence level. 
So a really good feature for you to look at, and this can be work. This can work in both real time and playback. So this camera right here comes in at $499 and it is currently available in the white color. In terms of what I've seen so far, in terms of the daytime, the clarity of the image is really good. The smart detections are there even at night, it picks everything up. As I mentioned, I did make that small little error with the smart zone, but as soon as I corrected that, everything started working as it should be. So whether it's IR or color night vision, they seem to work perfectly fine. What, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of this. Do you think it's worth the price point? Do you like some of the new features that have come on there? Or would you actually include this in your setup? For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.